What up guys, this is the first ever Unrelenting Brush video painting tutorial, so thank you very much for checking me out. Today I'm going to be painting up some of the fighters from the Horns of Hushut from the new Warcry box. Uh, Games Workshop very kindly sent me a box of the Heart of Gur for preview purposes, so thank you very very much to them. So this is an example of how I'll be painting my warband up. So lots of brass, copper, some nice dark flesh tones, some nice deep reds, just to keep them dark and sinister on top of a nice swampy jungly base. Uh, it doesn't take very long to do, it's lots of contrast and a few metallics with some light weathering. So to start off, you want to begin with a Xenothal Prime, so what that means is spraying the model Chaos Black and then attacking it from the top with some grey or white spray. I primed this chap black all over and then attacked it from the top with white scar, uh, which is a great new spray, it's come on grey and is nice and bright, so that means we can start lobbing some contrast on this guy and get him the show going. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to attack the flesh areas of the model as these are quite deeply hidden. There's not a lot of them, which is fun. So what we need to do first is get some contrast on there. I'm going to use Dark Oath Flesh, but any of the flesh tones from uh, Citadel's contrast range will be absolutely fine. So we're going to start off with applying our contrast for the flesh tone. I've gone for Dark Oath here, but Gulliman or Fire Slayer will do. So we apply it all over the arms, the hands, the waist, the back, the legs and the thighs. Uh, don't worry about it going where it looks very very dark, so like here on the back, that's just where the Xenothal is doing the work for us. It should dry with some faint colour. If we need to brighten it up later, we can always highlight it with a flesh tone acrylic, no problem. So once this is all applied, let it dry completely and we'll move on to the next bit. Don't stress too much about getting this paint onto bits of the armour or the cloth or whatever. Uh, this is a fine time to be messy because the paint's so thin and light that we'll be able to paint over it easy, no problem. Up next we're going to apply that little splash of colour that we need for this model which is going to be red. We're going to apply it to the tabard on the front and on the back and we're going to use the contrast the Blood Angel Red. Beautiful, vibrant, goes over this white paint beautifully. So you don't want to apply this too thick where it pulls and seeps to the bottom but you do want to apply it liberally to the point where you get a nice thick consistency all over. Uh, I'd say like a slightly heavy wash to uh, compare it, so you don't want it pulling massively, but you do want it to cover nicely. So again, apply this all over the tabard on the front and the back. Don't worry about getting it onto the rings and stuff, because we'll paint over those later. Uh, try and get to the inside of the tabards as carefully as you can, avoiding the flesh, but don't worry if we make any mistakes, we can tidy those up, no problem. Once it's applied, give it plenty of time to dry, and we'll move on to the next step. Up next, one of my favourite colours, Snake Bite Leather. We're just going to use that on the boots for a nice, quick and easy leather effect on the boots. Once again, apply nicely, get a good solid colour on there. Don't let it pull and seep and form big whopping puddles on the bottom. That is not what we want. Uh, cover, make sure you get it where you need it. Don't worry too much about it going a little bit on the flesh because all it does is shade that recess between the boot and the skin. And again, we can tidy up later. There is nothing we can't fix. Don't worry, it'll be reaped. Up next is fabric, so trousers are shorts and then whatever top half uh, these guys are wearing. So for that we're just going to use some really nice paint called Wildwood from Citadel's Contrast. Uh, once again, similar to the snake bite leather, just apply to the clothes liberally. Don't stress too much about getting it where you don't want it as long as it's not on areas you've already painted. Now this is very dark so this paints over stuff we've already painted very nicely. So those bits of uh, fabric that have got any flesh shade or leather or anything on them, this is going to cover that up real, real nice. So again, just apply in a steady layer so that it finishes nice, doesn't pull, and gives us that nice fabric-y dark leather finish. There we go, there's most of our base layers done. We've just got the biggest ones to come up, which is the metallics. Up next is the main body of our models for this warband, is the metallics. So I'm using Metal and Alchemy's Necro Gold and Black Metal. So for some reason the labels rub off really easy after use, so the one on the left is Black Metal, the one on the right is Necro Gold. So I'm going to apply these to our palette and mix them pretty much one to one. 
So take a drop of each, pop them fairly close to each other on the palette, use some clean water from a brush and mix them together and you get this really nice lovely dulled uh, brass effect that I think works great for these guys. So do that and then this is where it's going to pay to be careful when we apply it to the model so we don't want to undo all the colours that we've already done. So as is apparent on these guys there's quite a lot of metallics so this brass is going on pretty much everything. Uh, I didn't put it on the weapon hafts or the chains, I'm going to save those to be black metal, but again, if you want to put this colour on and then change your mind later, that's fine. If the paint's thin enough, then you can always just go over it later. So again, being as careful as you can not to go over any bits you've already painted, apply this uh, in a couple of thin layers, uh, make sure they dry in between to all the metallic areas. This is going to take the longest time, but it's also going to really help bring this dude to life. So there is all our brass done. Uh, as you can see, it's on everything bar the weapon halves, the chains, the grenade, and the horns either side of his helmet. Uh, we'll come back to those later on. Really, really nice colour. I'm really, really kind of discovered it by accident, but I'm glad I did. So now we're going to return to the weapon halves, the chains, and the grenade with black metal and get those painted up just to add a little bit of dark contrast to all that brass. It's at this stage where if you're looking at the armour and think, oh I could do with a little bit of a different colour to break up the brass, go for it. If you've got things like uh, you want to vary your armour panels or you want to make the trim a different colour, give it a go and see how it looks. Again, there is nothing that you can't undo. Uh, painting is always trial and error, so if you never try, you never know. So take a point and if you don't like it, just go back to the colour on your wet palette and do it again. Smasher, all the metallics done, so now let's go visit those horns. Uh, so you can paint these metal, uh, but I decided I'm going to show off how to do some contrast blending on these, because they seem a great excuse to do so. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint these white to cover any mistakes we've done. I'm a huge fan of Glacier Blue from a game colour, it's my favourite white colour despite the fact it's technically blue. So apply this over the horns, being gentle not to go over anything you've already painted, but once again, if you do, don't worry, go back and tidy it up. So now we've got those horns white, we're going to do some experimenting with some wet blending with contrast paints. So you need a dark paint for the lower half and a light paint for the top half. I chose Garagex Sewer for the bottom and Skeleton Horde for the top. The way to approach this is have both paints open and ready next to you. Ideally have two brushes too. Apply the uh, dark paint to the bottom half of the horn first. Then while that's still wet, quickly switch your brush to some Skeleton Horde and paint it from the top of the horn down. This means the two wet paints meet in the middle and should start to blend naturally. You can manipulate this with some gentle poking of the brush, but I'll show you how we do that in just a second. So once you have applied the skeleton horde around the horn, you can then gently poke the where the two colours meet with your brush. This causes the paint to fluctuate and manipulate, and then the two colours meet, and it should form a very natural looking blend. Uh, this is a fun technique you can mess around with, try out on some varying surfaces and textures, uh, and let me know what you come up with, because this is a really easy way to get some really interesting colours and blends down. Right, now onto some easy stuff. We're going to use Norn Oil just to paint in the uh, black metallic, so anything we painted black metal. So uh, the weapon halves, the grenades, the chain links and such. I'm also going to apply it to all the red tabard and fabric just so that our highlighting a bit will show up that little bit more prominently. 
Tailors all this time, load your brush up, apply it, not too thick, uh, but enough so it settles into the recesses and it will just give those a nice dark iron finish. So if you want to leave it here, you could. It's a wicked looking model with some really nice colours on there. I've chosen to take things a little bit further. I'm going to highlight that red first off. I'm going to use Model Colour Scarlet. Gorgeous, vibrant red. Uh, when used subtly, it's really, really nice on top of another red. Great for a little cheeky highlight. So I'll apply this to the very edges of the tabards and the cloth. And I'm also going to try and dot a little bit in the eye lenses on the helmet just to give it that raging bull kind of aesthetic. When approaching an edge highlight like this, uh, as most will tell you, it's great to use the edge of the brush instead of the point. Uh, this means you're a lot less likely to have the paint overspill and make any mistakes. The best piece of advice I can give when painting eyes with its lenses or pupils, move the model around. Most times you'll see more of the eye if you hold the model upside down or to the side. Then it's just a case of having a bit of paint on your brush, not overloading it, being as delicate as you can. It's infinitely easier to mess it up and tidy it up than it is to be perfect on the first go. Up next we're going to apply some verdigris effects with some Sotec Green. So like all weathering, less is more, so what we need to do with this, we need to thin it down with a lot of water. Uh, we want it to be similar to our washing consistency, but maybe not as strong because the pigment in this paint is quite high. You then want to place this where it's going to catch the eye, but also you need to be aware that you don't want to overdo it. So somewhere like on the front chest plate, around some crevices on the helm, around the wristband, uh, any nice little deep nooks and crannies where this will look great. On the plate mail across the legs there's some really nice little runes where this stuff fits perfectly. We're on the last step now, so get some of your basic flesh from Scale Colour, or you can use your Acadian Flesh Tone from uh, Citadel. Feather this ever so gently onto the most raised and protruding bits of the muscles in the arm. You can use the side of your brush to edge highlight the uh, knuckles and the fingers. This just makes the skin pop that little bit more and adds a little bit more warmth, and it uh, takes away the tea staininess of contrast, which makes a great base paint for uh, this next step. It's a really, really good, easy way to get some really nice, bright, warm skin. And there you have it, your first fighter is complete for the Horns of Hashut. Absolutely love this warband, they're so heavy metal and ferocious and chaosified. Uh, we're going to go on to basing them now, I'll do that in a separate video to show you how I get that really nice kind of damp jungle base. Uh, so check back for that. And that's my first ever video, so thank you very much for watching. This is not top tier quality, I appreciate that. This is all done on my phone, including editing. So if you've got any recommendations on hardware or software, things you'd like to see, any techniques or schemes you want to see me paint, I'd love to hear it. As long as it's constructive, I will take it on board. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.